Hello students, my name is Yashika Bhagat and I am a faculty of English department in the college Changugana Thapur Arts, Commerce and Science College, New Panvel Autonomy. The topic for today's session is tense, its type and usage. Before actually going into the topic of tenses, let us understand what is a structure of a sentence. As you can see on the screen, subject plus verb plus object should be the basic structure for any sentence. Why do I emphasize on the word basic? Because you can add other grammatical elements in a sentence and form it into a larger sentence. For example, you can add prepositions, you can add adverbs, adjectives and your sentence will be a longer one. But the basic structure remains the same. Subject, verb and object. How do we identify a subject or a verb or an object in the given sentence? To identify a subject, you should understand the doer of the sentence. Or, what is the main word in the sentence? What exactly has been spoken about? And then you get your subject. How do you identify a verb? There are three types of verbs when you need to classify it in the given sentence. Action verbs, when you understand the action, for example, do, play, read, run, etc. There are certain verbs of existence, for example, is, am, are, was, were, etc. And the third type of verb is the verb of possession, has, have, had, etc. And lastly, how to identify an object? Object is any word that is influenced by the verb or by the action that has been performed on the object. You can also call it as a non-doer in the sentence. Now, also to understand the topic of tenses well, you need to know the four verb forms really well before going into the topic. Now, what are the four verb forms? Usually, we refer to it as V1, V2, V3 and V1 ING form. Remember, there is no V4 form. It is called as V1 ING. Its nomenclature is slightly different in technical terms called as the root verb, simple past, past participle and present participle. We need not remember the names for the, for the today's topic, but let us understand what is the difference between all the four. V1, V2, V3, V4 or V1 ING as you can see is go, went, gone, going, rob, robbed, robbed, robbing. In many of the examples V2 and V3 are same but as you can also see V2 and V3 can vary according to the given root verb. The third example is run, ran, run and running. Fourth one do, did, done and doing. Once we are clear with the basics we can now move on to the first type of tense the simple present tense. Now students, you can easily understand or you can easily identify the type of sentence when you, are, when you know the tenses topic well, but the students face difficulties in understanding where exactly should we use the given tense. So today we will also learn the uses of the given tense. Now when exactly will you use the simple present tense? There are three conditions in which you are going to use the given tense. First condition is whenever you are going to talk about the daily activities. Activities which are a part of your routine. For example, I drink water daily. The word daily reflects here that the action is a part of your routine. So, I drink is a simple present tense. Then, if you want to talk about situations that reflect the habits of certain things. For example, the dog bark. Now, barking here is a habit of the animal dog. So, the dog's bark is again an example of simple present tense. Third condition in which you are going to use the simple present tense. The sun rises in the east. The sun rises in the east is a general truth. Whenever you are talking about factual data or universal truths which are true worldwide, you are going to go with the simple present tense. So here we studied the three uses of simple present tense. Whenever you are in the particular condition, whenever you are finding yourself in these situations, Without hesitation, go for the simple present tense. Now, after the uses, let us see what is the structure for simple present tense. As you can see, there are two types of sentences. One is a positive sentence, the other one is the negative sentence. The structure for positive sentence, as you can see on the screen, is subject plus V1. In the bracket, you can notice S, E, S or I, E, S. Let us come back to that later. Before that, let us see an example given in the positive sentence. I read newspaper. As you can see, it is a daily routine. It is a habit. So, I read newspaper is classified under the simple present tense. 
Now, why have we written X, E, F or I, E, F in the bracket? As you can see, simple, uh, simple present tense uses V1 form of the verb. So, in many of the examples, you can see sometimes we add S, sometimes we don't. As you can see in the sentences, first sentence, the human body contains. So, we have added a S over there. The second example, I play. We did not say I plays. In the third example, it is I sometimes go. Did I say I sometimes goes? No. So, how do we identify? When do we add S? And when do we not add the S? So, there is a simple rule to remember. As you can see it in the colored font, if subject, the S here stands for subject. If subject is third person and singular, only in that case you are going to add the extra S, ES or IES making your verb plural. This concept is called as subject verb agreement. There is an agreement between the subject and the verb whether they are going to be in plural or remain in the singular form. For example, uh, for, for example, the same sentence, I read newspaper. The subject is I. I is singular, correct? I read newspaper. I is singular but I is not in third person. It is in first person. So, we did not add the word S. We, we never say I reads newspaper. It is always I read newspaper. The reason being, though I is singular, but it is not in third person. If we have to make the negative of the same uh, sentence or in the same tense, how do I change it into, a, how do I convert it into a negative sentence? You just have to add do not or does not to your verb. For example, I read newspaper converts into I do not read newspaper. Again, your verb remains same. I, I cannot add an S to read. So, all I have done is added a negation before the verb, that is the not. So, my sentence now is, I do not read newspaper. Let us come back to the three examples that you can see on the screen, one below the other. The human body contains 206 bones. The subject in this sentence is the human body. Is it singular? Yes. Is it third person? Yes. So, our two conditions are satisfied. The subject is singular as well as in third person. My verb will now take an extra S with it. The human body contains 206 bones. Also notice, this is a factual information. We use simple present tense when we are talking about facts. So, simple present tense, the human body contains 206 bones. Second example, I play football every weekend. I, singular, correct. But is it third person? No. So, our situation here, our condition here is not fulfilled. So, I will not use an S, ES or IES. My verb remains singular. I play football every weekend. Third sentence. I play football every weekend is also uh, a daily routine activity. So, we have put this sentence in a simple present tense. Now, the third example for today. I sometimes go to the cinema. Now, this is the habit of a person. He is talking about his habit of visiting to the cinemas. He sometimes visits the cinema. So, this is again a habit of a person. I is again singular and first person. So, we did not add any ES. I sometimes go to the cinema. If clear with this, let us move to the next type of, this, of the tenses. Second type is classified as present continuous tense. Now, class, always remember whenever you see the word continuous in your tense, understand you are going to use the last verb form that is the ing form whether it is present continuous or whether it is the fourth type of tense present perfect continuous tense in both the cases whenever there is the word continuous you are always going to use the ing form of the verb let us understand the three situations under which we are going to use present continuous tense so the uses for the present continuous tense are as follows first situation if something is happening now at the time of speaking. Example, we are learning English. Correct? I am teaching you. You students are learning it from me. So, the activity which is happening right now at the given specific time. So, we are going to use present continuous tense when something is happening right now. Second, uh, second situation, if something is happening nowadays. Example, my sister is pursuing MBA this year. Now, is it possible that my sister is right now present in her class and she is pursuing her MBA? No, it may be night time or it may be the day time. She cannot every time be in the uh, college doing her MBA studies. So, something that is happening these days, something that is happening for over a few days 
In that case also we can use present continuous tense. I shall give you one more example in this case. For example, we are preparing for the wedding rituals of my brother. So I am not literally preparing for the wedding rituals. rituals. I am here in front of you. But what is happening nowadays in my house? We are preparing for wedding rituals. So something that is happening nowadays in your life, you can tell it with the help of present continuous tense. Third situation, when we talk about some plans which are already scheduled or they are in the near future. What do I mean by this? Let us understand with the example. We are having a party tonight. Now, the party has been already scheduled, maybe 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. But it has been scheduled at a particular time when your plan is already scheduled and it is going to take place in the near future. Please remember the word near. When it is going to take place in the near future, you can always go for the present continuous tense. We are having a party tonight. Let us move on to the structure of the present continuous tense. Again, there are two types of sentences, positive sentence and negative sentence. Now, the structure here is V1 ing. If you observe, in the first tense, we use only the V1 form. But since it is a continuous tense, we are going to go with the ing form. Now, what are the helping verbs that we are using here? Is, am and are. So, again, there are certain situations that you need to remember when exactly to use is, are or am. To remember am is very easy. Am always goes with the pronoun I. There is no other condition to it. I am. This is the only combination that goes with each other. Now, where do I use is and where do I use are? Is always goes with singular subject. Are always goes with plural subject. And the main verb I am going to use in the ing form. Let us correlate it with the example written beside. I am writing a letter. My subject is I and the helping verb that I have used is am because this is the only right combination. I am. My verb V1 is in the ing form. I am writing. So, I am writing a letter. Now, this is something that the person is doing right now. The action is going right now. So, we have took this example in the form of present continuous tense. I am writing a letter. If I have to make it into a negative sentence, I am going to put the negation not before the verb. I am not writing a letter. Let us see few more examples. Example number one. Children are going to school. Let us see it according to the structure. The subject in the sentence is children. Children is plural. So we are going to use the helping verb are. I cannot say children is going to school. That will be wrong because plural verb takes are with it. Plural subject takes are with, are with it. Children are going to school. I am cooking pasta for lunch. I am trying out something new. Let us understand the situation. Children are going to school. This might be an activity which is going on right now. I am cooking pasta for lunch. An activity that is going on right now. I am trying out something new. This is an activity which is going out these days. Why do I say these days? Maybe uh, this something new activity can be dancing. It can be singing. So, I am trying out dancing. I am trying out dancing does not necessarily mean right now I am dancing. These days, I am giving my best and I am trying out to dance. So, I can very easily use the phrase I am trying out something new. Or I can say I am trying out dancing. Do not forget the use of the tense. This tense is used in three situations. Something that is spoken about right now. Something that you speak about actions that are happening these days. Something that is happening nowadays. And the third condition, some events or some plans that have already been scheduled or they are going to take place in the near future. Clear with this, let us move on to the third type of the present tense. Named as the present perfect tense. Now class, here there is only one condition that you are going to remember. Before this, the two tenses which we have studied, each one of them had three situations to be remembered. But here, there is only one situation you are going to remember. The word perfect means an action that is complete, an action that has already taken place. Let us read the situation. It represents an action of the past which has a result now. Now, this might seem difficult to understand, but with the examples, the situation will be clear to you. All completed actions having some connection with the present time. Let us correlate this with an example. I have become a father. 
Now, the verb here is become and the helping verb is have. I have used it in the perfect tense. Why? Because the action has already been complete. He has not become a father now. Already the action is complete. Maybe two days ago, maybe ten years ago. But the action of becoming a father is complete now. So, action which is complete in the past, but we are talking about it in the present now. I have become a father. In my case, I can say I have become a teacher. It is not that today I have become a teacher or now I had become a teacher. I had become a teacher few years ago. But still, I can use it in the present perfect tense. I have become a father. Let us see the structure so that you understand it more clearly. Positive sentence and the negative sentence. Here the structure, you will always use the V3 form. Always remember, perfect tense is equal to the V3 form. Whenever your actions are complete, eaten, gone, in that case, you are going to use the V3 form for present perfect tense. And what are the helping verbs that, are you, that you are going to use? Has and have. Has stands for singular verb. Has stands for plural verb. For example, they have come. My subject is they. They is a plural subject and they will carry have. They have come. My main verb come is in the V3 form. When my action is complete, for example, let us imagine a scenario. You are visiting your house and you see that uh, the guests have arrived. So your mom comes and receives you on the door and she says, they have come. Who are they? They are the guests. And she is telling you they have come. That means the action is already complete. You are the one who is going late to the home. But the guests have already come. When the action is complete, you can go for present perfect tense. Second type, or not the second type actually, it's the negative sentence of the same type. When you have to uh, make it a negative sentence, you have to add the word negation word not to the verb. For example, they have not come. Let us imagine the same scenario. You go home and ask your mom, mom, have my friends come yet? What would she say? She would say, they have not come. That means the action is not complete. Understood? Whenever you talk about completed actions, you go for the present perfect tense. Let us see a few more examples. Raj has just gone out to the market. Now, we are going to Raj's house and we are inquire about Raj to his mother. What does the mother reply? Raj has just gone out to the market. That means going out. The action of going out is complete. Raj is no more in the house. He has gone out. So, Raj is my subject. Singular subject will always carry the helping verb has. So, we have written Raj has. Gone out is my main verb in the third form, V3 form. So, the sentence Raj has just gone out to the market. Second example, I have done all my homework. Imagine your teacher comes into the class and asks you, what about your assignments? What about the homework that you were supposed to do the weekend? An excited student who has completed all his work would stand up on the chair and say, I have done all my work because all his assignments, all his tasks are complete. The action of doing the homework is complete. When the action is complete and you are answering it, in, uh, it right now in the present tense, you say, I have done all my homework. I is the subject. I will carry the uh, helping verb have. Done is the V3 form. What are the other forms? Do, did, done and doing. So, V3 form done will be used over here. Third example for this particular tense, Julia has completed her degree from Delhi University. Now, th this Julia is my friend from college, but for a few years we are not in contact. So, I am asking my mother, what about Julia? Uh, what is she doing right now? So, my mother tells me, Julia has completed her degree from Delhi University. So, the uh, action of completing her degree is already complete. That means she has already pursued her degree. This sentence can be reframed as Julia has pursued her degree from Delhi University. It will again be the same. Pursued is the V3 form. Completed again is the V3 form of the verb. Why have I used the helping verb has here? Because Julia is a singular subject. Has will always go with singular subject. Have will always go with plural subject. Done with this, let us go to the last type of the present tense, which is the present perfect continuous tense. Now again, can you see the word continuous? So, you have to use the ing form. Whenever you see the word continuous in the name of your tense, in the nomenclature of the tense, you have to do, you have to use V1 ing form. 
Now again, there is only one situation in which you are going to use this particular tense. Now what is the situation? When the given action or the given activity has already started in the past and it is not complete. Not complete. What do I mean by this? Perfect tense was about completed actions. Perfect continuous tense is about actions which are still happening or actions which are still going on. In some cases, it might have just stopped. For example, let us correlate the given situation with the example. We have been learning English for three days. Let us understand this. The action of learning, my main verb over here, my action is learning. The action of learning has already begun three days ago. Correct? We have been learning English for three days. So the action has already started in the past. Three days ago, the action has been started. But have we completed learning English? No. The action is still going on. We have been learning English for three days. Let us see the structure and other examples of this uh, tense. Uh, structure is subject plus has have plus been plus v1 ing. Now this structure might seem complicated but is really easy to understand. v1 ing goes because it is the continuous tense. Has and have goes because it is the perfect tense. And the word been which is new to us b double -E e n been is used because this particular tense is a combination of the second and the third tense. That is the perfect tense and the continuous tense. Hence the name simple present perfect continuous tense. What is the example? She has been running. Let us understand. She has been running. The time period is not specified over here. But it could be she has been running since morning. She has been running since 10 days. She has been running since 12 years. So you can give any kind of time period to the given sentence. But the action is not complete. She is still running. She has been running. What is the negative of this particular sentence? You have to add not after your verb. She has not been running. I think we need to get a clarity on this through examples that are given below. First example. I have been reading War and Peace for a month now. Now this is a book titled War and Peace. I Just imagine I have started reading this book a month ago. And I have yet not completed this book. So I am still reading. The process of reading is still going on. My action has not been completed. So when I have started this activity of reading a month ago and I am still reading, I will be going for the perfect continuous tense. I have been reading War and Peace for a month now. Second example. We had been trying to open the door for five minutes. Uh, there is a mistake. It should be we have been trying because we are learning the present tense. Had is wrong here. The structure has to be we have been trying to open the door for five minutes. Now, what is my main action? What is the main verb over here? Trying is the main verb. So, uh, we have been trying to open the door for five minutes. My activity started five minutes ago. But the door, we are still trying on it. The action has not been completed. So when your activity starts maybe 5 minutes ago or maybe a month ago, your action has started in the past but is still in continuation even today, even now. So we had been, we have been trying to open the door for 5 minutes. And the last example, I have been writing a novel. Now students, as you know, writing a novel is not an easy task which you can complete in 2 to 4 days. So writing a novel is an activity which maybe I have started years ago or maybe months ago but my activity is still going on. The action of writing is still going on. My action of writing a novel has not been completed yet. So I use the perfect continuous tense. I have been writing a novel. I can make the sentence longer. I can say I have been writing a novel since 5 years. I have been writing a novel for two days now, so I can uh, I can uh, I can mention the time period of of my particular action. But here again, we understand with the help of have been writing that the sentence is in perfect continuous tense, which means the activity, the action, has been started already in the past and is still going on. Thank you for your patient listening. We shall meet again with the past tense in our next lecture. Thank you. Have a good day.